Hey and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to try something a little bit different from my normal videos and we're going to take a look at how to automatically rename files with Python depending on some patterns within the text. We'll also look at how to organize your files into logical folder structures. Let's get started. Okay so for this tutorial we're going to have to import two different libraries. We're going to import datetime and we're actually going to import the date time class from date time. So we're going to write from date time, import date time. And then we're going to use the path lib um, library as well. And in particular, we're going to be using the path class. So we're going to write from path lib, import path. And make sure you import it with a capital P here. So to follow along with this tutorial, I'll link to some sample files that I've created for this tutorial. and. I'm just going to open them here in my folder called files. So we can see that we have six different Excel files here. Each of them starts with a particular region, then the sales keyword, and then the date. Now what you might notice with this is that while the date is easy to read, it's not exactly easy to sort. Say if we wanted the data sorted alphabetically like it is now, it no longer exists in a chronological format. So we want to be able to organize our files in a more meaningful way. And this file structure might look different depending on your own needs, but hopefully this tutorial will give you what you need to go along with it. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll actually create a path ob object. So we'll call this our files and we'll initialize it using the path class and then into this we're going to pass a string of our path to that folder that holds our files. So to do this on a Mac you can in your um, view you can toggle on uh, the show path bar down here and that will open this up. On a Windows computer you can simply you can simply shift and right click on the folder and it'll give you an option to choose as path. So down here you can simply also click copy files as path name. And now we're going to pass this in as a string. So what happens when we create this is that we now have an object oriented wrapper around this path. It, Python no longer treats this simply as a string but rather as a path object. Meaning that the path lib library can give us different attributes as well as different methods that we can use to gain information about this path object or to be able to manipulate it. So let's see what this actually means. If we wanted to figure out what type that path lib object is, we could print out the type of that. So let's run this and see what it looks like. We can see that it's a class path lib with a positional uh, with a path in it. So if you're running this in Windows, you'll get a slightly different path object down here, which just helps a uh, path lip discern between a Mac OS and a Windows path. So let's see what some of our attributes that we can access are. We can see whether or not our path evaluates to a file or a directory using the isFile. So if we type in isFile, and now um, you can see that it's a method that returns a Boolean. So if we run this, Let's take out the type here. When we run this, we can see that our path isn't a file because we know it to be a directory. So similarly, we can check whether or not it's a directory using the isdir method. So when we run this now, we'll get a true back. So there's another number of helpful attributes that we can check for further information about our path object. So let's take a quick look at some of these attributes in action. So say we have this file object here and we've already initialized it to be a path lib object. When we want to see what the parent of it is, like in our previous example, we can print out the parent attribute and we can access it by suffixing the dot parent to our path lib object. This in this case would return anything that precedes it up to the files folder. Now what if we wanted some other information, such as the name of the file? You can see that it now only prints out the name of the file, including its extension. 
But what if you only wanted the actual name without the extension? You could use the stem attribute. And this omits the extension as well as any multiple extensions. Finally, if you really wanted to know what the extension type is, you could use the suffix attribute, which in this case would return xlsx. Now, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with renaming our files? Having access to all of these different attributes allows us to actually be able to glean information about the different parts of our file and be able to rename and organize them in a safe manner. So another method that I want to draw your attention to is the iterdir method. So the iterdir method actually returns a generator object of all of the different files and uh, folders within your directory. So if we wanted to run this now, let's see what this looks like. We can see that it's actually a generator object, so in order to be able to print out information about the files, we need to iterate over them. So the way that we can do this is by writing a for loop. For example, we could write for file in our files dot iterator print file. So when we do this, we can see that it's now actually returned all of these different files. You'll also notice that there's this .ds underscore store file. This is a macOS specific file that we'll want to skip over. And I'll include some special instructions in terms of being able to do this later on in the tutorial. So simply printing out information about our file names isn't exactly what we want to do. So we'll want to set up a number of key um, variables around our actual file path. For example, we'll want to know what our directory is. So we can name a new variable called directory and we'll call this file.parent. Another one that we'll want is the actual extension of the, so we can write file.suffix. Now, one of the things that we really want to be able to do is change the way in which these files are actually named. For example, we may want to name them 2021-0201 for February 1st of 2021 and prefix that to the East and Sales so that we can sort all the files chronologically on the day that they represent. So in order to do this, we can call our variable old name and use the stem attribute. Now, we can see from our example that if we want to be able to split this into three logical parts, these parts are actually delimited by hyphens. So we can access each of these different parts using our old name variable and unpack. In order to be able to uh, unpack these effectively, we need to tell Python to skip over this file since this ds.store file doesn't actually have any hyphens in it. So what we'll do is write our first if statement in this loop. So we can write if file dot name not equal to dot ds underscore store run this code. So now we'll be able to print out what the report type actually is here or what the date is. So we'll write print out old date. So when we run this, we can see that it's actually returned just the date portion of our file name. So this now lets us be able to actually manipulate the string in a very meaningful way. So what we can do is actually convert the string of the old date into a date time object so that we can manipulate it into something that's a lot easier to read and to be able to sort using your system. So what we can do is just call this old date and we'll use the date time strp method. And we're gonna pass in the old date variable here. And we're gonna pass in the format. So you can type in percent sign capital Y then a lowercase b and a lo lowercase d. So what this means is that we're passing in the year in a four digit character sequence. The lowercase b means that we're passing in the first three letters of that month and the lowercase d means that we have a zero padded number here. So let's 
now convert this date back into a string, but something more meaningful. So we're going to call this date. And then we're going to, again, use the date time class. And this time we'll use the string from time method. So note here that in the first one we had a P and here we have an F. So we're going to pass in the old date variable here. And now we're going to return it in the format that we actually want it to be. So again, we want the year to be the first one, but then we want the month to be in a numerical format and we want the date to also be numerical. So let's see whether or not this worked. And it's really helpful to be able to iterate over this and make sure that the code's actually doing something that you wanted to do before you run all of it later on. So let's print this out now and make sure that it's actually done the transformations in the way that we wanted them to. So we can see that it's turned 2021 Feb 01 into 2021-02-01. So this lets us sort a lot easier later on alphabetically by month and then by day. So the next thing that we want to do is create a new name for this file. So what we can do here is create a variable called new name. We're gonna use an F string. And if you wanna learn more about F strings, check out my tutorial that I'll link to right up here. So we're gonna write F and the first thing we'll pass in is the date. Then we'll pass in the region. And then we'll pass in the report type. And finally, let's pass in the extension as well. So, Let's see what this new name looks like now. So when we run this, we can see that we were able to actually reformat the name from East Sales and then the date to the date East Sales. Now, the way that we could rename this right now is using the rename extension. So you would write file, rename. The way that we could rename this right now the way that we could rename this right now is by passing in the rename method onto the file object. So we could write file.rename and then put in the path and our directory, separated by a comma and the new name. So what this path is gonna do, it's, it's gonna create a new path object of our directory, which will be this piece here as well as our new name, including its extension. But we don't want to do this just yet because we do want to be able to, it like, we want to be able to sort these files into different folders. In particular, what we want to be able to do is sort these files into folders called January, February, March, and so on for the months that actually exist. So that these three files will get renamed, but also moved into a folder called January. Similarly, these three files will get renamed into our new structure, but also moved into a folder called February. So the way that we can do this, I'm just going to comment this out for later. The way that we're going to do this is by actually checking during our for loop whether or not a directory with the month's name already exists. And so the way that we can do this is by creating a new variable that stores just the month in a logical format. So the way that we can do this is by using our old date variable again. Keep in mind that old date is still in a date time object. So we're able to simply parse out using this strf method, um, the name in a more clean spelling. And we can do this by writing month equals date time, str from time. And then we're gonna pass in the old date and this time we'll use the format of percent sign capital B. So the capital B, instead of printing out um, Jan, Feb, will actually print out January, February, and so on. So we can verify this by, uh, printing, by printing out the month. So when we run this now, we can see that we get February, January, and everything spelled out. So now we wanna see whether or not in that path object a directory with the name January or February exists depending on the file. We can do this by creating a new path with that month's name in it and checking if whether or not that directory actually exists. So we're gonna create a new variable called new path and we'll use our files dot join path 
and we'll pass in the month. So if we were to print out new path now, we can see that it's created a path with the month's name attached to it. So what we want to do is check whether or not this directory exists. If it doesn't exist, we want to be able to create it. So we're going to write if not new path dot exists and this exists method returns a boolean statement whether or not this new path object actually exists on your system. So if it doesn't exist, remember we wrote if not, we want to be able to create it and we can do this using the mkdir method. So we're going to write new path dot mkdir. So what we want to do now is create a new path within this new directory with our new file name. So again, we're going to use the join path method method here. So we'll write new file path equals new path dot join path. And we'll pass the new name variable. So when we run this now, it's going to create a new path object that joins our original path this files folder here with the month name folder as well as our new file name in this newly created format here. Now before we do this what we actually need to do is pass in another if statement and the reason we need to do this is as soon as this for loop starts running it's going to create a new folder because none of these folders exist so we need to make sure that the file that it's looping over is actually a file and not a directory. So the way that we can do this is by writing another condition here where we write and file dot is file. So this again will return a Boolean statement true if the file that we're looping over is actually a file. If it ends up returning the path to a directory that we create later on in here, it's going to skip that file because it's not really a file. So the last piece that we actually need to do is use this rename method, but we do need to change it up a little bit because we no longer need to actually create this path object here because we've already done that up here. So if we comment this out and within our call here, we simply write new file path this is all we need to do. So I'm going to minimize this a little bit so we can see it happen and we can see how quickly it actually happens. If we were to run this now, we can see how very quickly all of these files were both renamed and sorted into correct folders. I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. We covered off quite a bit and I hope that you're able to adapt it to your particular use cases. You're also able to blend in regular expressions if you want to get more fancy with your file names and reorganizations. You can apply this in many different ways. For example, you would be able to parse out by different file extensions and sort them in those methods to be able to clean up your download folder on a regular basis as it gets too busy. If you enjoyed this tutorial, consider liking this video and subscribing and hitting the little bell icon to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.